So a few months ago, I released Adventure Leaf, an app that aimed at giving people real world side quests. The idea is that a user would log in, find an adventure that looked appealing, and then complete these adventures with location, image, or video verification. The idea from this app came from me trying to solve my own problem. After getting off work, I would come home and binge social media or Netflix, and I'm a pretty active person and like things to do. However, sometimes it's overwhelming trying to find things, so I thought an app that put this all in one spot for me would be the perfect solution. So after a few days of thinking about it, I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger, because after all, how hard could it really be? Because this was the first iOS app I was ever going to release to the App Store, I really wanted to scrutinize which framework to go with. I'd used Flutter a couple times in the past and really liked it for its cross compatibility as well as ease of use. However, because I was going to be using camera, video, and microphone access, I did not want to run into an edge case where you just find out later on there's nothing you can really do about it. So instead, I decided to go with Swift, which is Apple's native platform for building iOS apps. So after I'd chosen Swift, the rest of the tech stack really fell into place. I went with Node.js for its quick development time and great documentation. I went with Firebase for user authentication because personally, I do not want to be responsible for having to store user sensitive information like passwords, and I would rather delegate that to a team like Google. Next, I went with Postgres because it's relational and it's well established, so that was kind of a no brainer for my database. And lastly, I went with Cloudflare for their object storage for things like images and videos, as well as their caching. With an idea solidified and a tech stack in mind, it was time to move on to UI development. The only issue with that is I hate UI development. Now, I'm not very good at it, but that's beside the point. I mean, if you've ever seen something I've done, you look at it and say, who's been giving my fourth grader ketamine? So I had to go on the internet and find someone who would do it for me. So after paying a stranger on the internet, I received a Figma file back containing all the UI mockups for my app. And with that out of the way, it was time to move on to system design. The first thing I wanna talk about is database design, as this was by far the hardest part of this project. Not because database design is super complicated, but because the scope kept expanding. In my case, for the adventures aspect. At first, I had two tables, an adventures table and an objectives table, where the adventures table would store title, description, and other relevant metadata, while the objectives table would store a task, a verification type such as image, video, or location, and then link back to the specific adventure that it was correlated with. However, I started thinking it would be cool if you could do procedurally generated adventures. So I created a new junction table that could now host an adventure along with an objective to be able to reuse objectives over and over. This may seem trivial, but every query now had an extra join in it and the time complexity grew as well. Not to mention location data. Because there were several kinds of venues based on the adventure type, whether it was movie theaters, parks, etc., I had to use Google's location API to find a venue that was closest to the user to match their current adventure. This really blew the complexity up to be bigger than Lizzo, and I ended up scrapping it in favor for something simpler for the minimum viable product. When a user starts an adventure, they have to complete objectives that are made up of image, location, and video verification. The question is, how do you solve this problem? And at first, I came up with the idea of manual verification, where every time a user solved an objective, I would be there verifying it personally. Now, obviously this does not scale up well, and then you could think about hiring other people, but that still would be a pretty manual and labor-intensive task. The second solution was a consensus-based algorithm where users would have to vote on whether another user completed objectives or not. However, this seemed like it might take away from the experience from all the users in general, and it could have potential for abuse. So I went with option number three. I chose OpenAI to solve this problem using their vision model to act as a content moderator on my backend. In a nutshell, I would send an image to OpenAI's servers along with the objective task and a prompt saying you are a content moderator based on this image or video or whatever the objective was, did the user pass or fail? And after looking at it, the response would simply be pass or fail that got sent to my backend, which would be used to verify an objective. This is very much like the first manual solution. However, it's automated and it can scale infinitely and linearly for a cheaper price. Next, I wanna talk about the Apple Dev Experience. In case you don't know, if you're building an iOS app, you have to have a Mac to ship your iOS app to the Apple Store. Furthermore, they want you to use Xcode, and judging from the terrible reviews, I can say these are perfectly warranted. This was by far the worst IDE I have ever used. From the key binds to the fuzzy searches to the ease of use, this thing feels Soviet era. Now, I already don't like having to buy an Apple laptop just to develop an iOS app. 
Furthermore, I don't like getting mogged on by Tim Cook being told I have to use this terrible IDE. I should be able to use whatever the hell I want. But with that said, let's move on to Swift. Now Swift, on the other hand, is a lot like the stepchild that shows up on Christmas that no one wants to acknowledge. His parents thought they were pros, they had three kids before him, but ultimately he just did not pan out. More specifically, I'm talking about the syntactic sugar that is this language. It feels like the most generic language ever, just throwing syntactic sugar at it to try to make it unique. And then the components that they give you for search bars, etc., are kind of like pre-built cars. They give you something that's fully built, but you really can't customize it to the way you want. So if you don't like it, you have to end up just building things from scratch, but you've already spent the time to try to learn how these components work. So you've just wasted more time. All in all, I was not impressed with the Apple ecosystem. Nothing about it felt unique. It all just felt closed off and kind of proprietary. With that being said though, I will say, Swift was incredibly easy to learn. I had never once touched it before and I was able to build an app from scratch using it. So that should speak to the simplicity of the app and the framework. Finally, I'd like to speak on what I learned and things I would do differently for the next startup. From a technical perspective, the biggest thing I learned was effective bug hunting. When you're building a relatively small app, bug hunting is simple. You just hit the run button and then you can kind of find where the line is erroring on and then trace it back and it's somewhat straightforward. But when you're building with an entire system in mind, when you have a front end, a back end, caching, reverse proxy, the complexity goes from finding a needle in a haystack to finding a saint at a ditty party. I'll let you figure out what that means. With that said, it's absolutely critical you have good logs everywhere. Logging is something when you first start programming, you kind of ignore, or probably don't do it all. But as you start building bigger and bigger projects, having logging is the difference between bug hunting for hours trying to find a problem versus a couple of minutes. The most memorable bug was trying to upload a photo from my Swift app to my R2 storage bucket. I would upload from the Swift app, which would then go to my server, which would then be uploaded to my R2 storage bucket. However, after looking at the logs, I was able to see that the image variable was null. So looking back at my pipeline, I had uploaded a photo from my app it had gone through my reverse proxy that handled the request, and then it had gone to my backend where it completed successfully. However, because this variable was null, I knew that it had to be somewhere between my front end and that exact point in the code. And the only thing between those two things was the Nginx reverse proxy. I found out that my Nginx had a max file size that was too small, so it was ignoring all the files it was being sent. So using the logs, I was able to find exactly where in the stream the issue was happening, and then just slowly backtrace until I got to the issue. This would have been virtually impossible to diagnose if I did not have good logging. From a business perspective, the most important lesson I learned was make your minimum viable product as small as possible and then do it again. In my case, I've already told you about the procedural generation aspects, but I also added achievements in social networking, which I still think are really cool ideas, but they added about a month's worth of development time. And when you're trying to get up and off the ground, this makes all the difference in the world because what no one tells you is you're developing in the dark. More specifically, when you have an idea for something, you get really excited, you start to build it. And then a week goes by and the excitement starts to fade. Another week goes by, the excitement's basically gone. By the time you've hit a month or a month and a half, you're kind of wondering, was this even a good idea? And you're just in the dark completely not knowing. And then every day after that, the uncertainty builds exponentially. So being able to get off the ground and get your app idea out there is not only crucial for finishing your idea, but for keeping your sanity intact. Third is don't be afraid to delegate. I've never outsourced work before, so hiring a UI designer was a pretty big step for me. But I have to say, if I didn't hire someone, I probably would have never built this or got it off the ground because I would not have been confident enough with my own UI work or even enjoyed that process enough to finish and follow through with it. So being able to just delegate things is a crucial skill I would definitely recommend to everyone. Lastly, I would like to say, think with the end in mind. When I built this app, I was thinking it would be a cool idea, and that's the sole reason I built it. However, as the cost for this project grew and the amount of time that went into it increased exponentially, I started trying to throw different monetization strategies at it, which is not a solid business practice at all, and it also kind of ruined some of the fun of development because I was trying to make it too much into a business. As to where if I would have said from the get-go, this is just a side project, then I would have had a lot better of a time. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button like Will Smith at the Oscars. Hit subscribe if you want to see more content. And if you have any questions, I've created a Discord. So feel free to join. The link is in the description below. Until next time, this is Trevor Satori signing out.